Welcome to a Besto TV production. If you enjoy our content, please click the subscribe button. To get notifications of new releases, ring that bell. Thank you, and away we go. I wanted to say one thing to uh, my friend Ultraman out there. Um, got your girl right here, just uh, spending the day with me. So, um, you know, use your ultra hearing, you might hear some fun things later. Besto Productions presents Creative Continuity at New York Comic Con 2013. Get the latest news directly from artists, writers, and the occasional celebrity appearance. Tune in for Creative Continuity's coverage of NYCC. We bring the convention to you. Is she hey. pregnant? Pregnant? Uh, you have to. I hope not. Otherwise, uh. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, that would be great, wouldn't it? Mahmoud Azrar, how did a man like yourself get into comics? Well, I was, I was always interested in drawing, and I always had a pencil or pen in my hand, and uh, comics were also a part of my life as growing up, so the two merged, and I started drawing comics, and I studied art school, and then I started doing comics. Did, uh, did anyone in uh, your, your, where you grew up in Turkey push you to uh, push your talent? Well, uh, my family was always supportive and I had some really close friends who were also interested in doing comics, uh, like my friend Yildiray Çınar, who is also an artist at DC Comics. So we created comics together. <laughs> oh, wow. So you self-published yourself? Yeah, yeah. We did uh, fanzines. We stapled books together, photocopied them and put them on shelves in bookstores <laughs> and everything. That's how we got started. That's awesome. Where was your first uh, breakthrough work and uh, company-wise? Uh, I think the first time I got really noticed was my Dynamo 5 work with Image Comics. So that's it. <laughs> uh, How would you enjoy working with them on that sort of stuff? It was great. Uh, it was great to have the creative freedom. We could do anything we wanted almost. and uh, So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. How's that been in terms of your transition to bigger companies like uh, DC and stuff? Uh, Working for the bigger companies, of course, you have less creative freedom. You gotta work on, but you got you, when you go in that, you know that, so you gotta work accordingly. So, they both have their own charms and you know downsides. Right now, I'm really happy drawing for DC. I, I mean, I used to draw for DC. Right now, I'm with Marvel, and I'm really having a good time because I'm working on characters I always wanted to work with. But I want to go back to creative-owned uh, works in the future to do my own work, and uh, so because I'd like to be remembered with something I did on my own instead of somebody else's character, maybe. <laughs> That's awesome. Where did you, uh, how did you find yourself working uh, for the new 52? Well, uh, I was asked to, uh, to draw some covers for Supergirl. Uh, that was pre-New 52. And then uh, I think that was kind of a test for me to, uh, you know, to see how the, I did with the character, which led to the actual offer of drawing the entire series. How did you guys go about re, uh, redesigning and revamping her and her, maybe uh, her cast? Uh, for a while I did my own designs, uh, which uh, we uh, had some back and forth with the editorial and everybody. But in, eventually Jim Lee came up with a design which we ended up using in the book. Okay. How did you, did you have to adapt her to your style at all or was it pretty much... Uh, yeah, yeah, transfer? I did. I mean. Uh, I kind of changed some small, small, really small things, like uh, maybe you know adding curves of here or there, or changing the, something, uh, some elements of the capes and stuff like that. Try to make it uh, more uh, compatible with my work. You know. How what was it? Uh, what was it like working on that series as a whole? I mean, you guys had a great opening salvo for coming down, not knowing where she is, being a bit more hostile to the environment than she's been, and then you know the powwow with Power Girl. Um, yeah. How has that been um, working with, I guess, I guess I'll start, how is it working with the mics? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess I was one of the lucky guys out of the New 52. We had a really great team between the writers, me, the editor, the colorist. I mean, uh, we all were e all easy to work with, I suppose. And we were all good with our time. So, like, uh, it was a blast throughout, you know. We, of course, we had some ups and downs, and, but uh, nothing that couldn't be handled in a what was it uh, like in terms of transitioning to working with Michael Allen Nelson? Uh, that was a more uh, jarring time because we also had an editorial change. The editor, Will Moss, uh, moved uh, off to another book and we had Eddie Berganza come back. And it was, uh, I mean, uh, so it was like just an adaptation period. But we didn't have any struggles or anything, but uh, it was, kind of, of course, it's kind of slowed down things for a little while. What's it like differently working with Marvel? Uh... Well, uh, to me, it's not much different. I mean, uh, 
they both treat me great, so I'm uh, very lucky in that sense. Uh, so I'm happy on both sides. Uh, so it's like almost like a matter of uh, choosing what to work on in a way. So I wanted to do some Marvel books, and so they offered me some great jobs, and right now I'm doing more with them. Okay, so what do you have coming up, man? Well, right now I'm doing more work with Marvel, and uh, I've done an annual with Jeff Parker of The Indestructible Hulk, oh, nice. which will come out in December, and I'm doing some issues with Mark Wade in the actual series, which will also come out soon. Uh, I have an upcoming book, uh, book afterwards, I can't talk about it right now. <laughs> Is that independent, DC? It's more Marvel work. Dustin Nguyen. Hey guys, how are you, Tommy? How's it going? Is it Nguyen or when? When? When, okay. I, I Nguyen, Nguyen, whatever. So, what's your comics career been like? Uh, how'd you get in a little bit? Uh, you know, just pretty much uh, the story everyone's got. You know, you do pages, hit up conventions, and uh, yeah, drop samples. Just draw like crazy, man, yeah. What uh, inspired you to want to go into this uh, wacky business? Uh, I wanted to draw for a living. You yeah. wanted to draw for a living. Who? Uh, what kind of comics inspired you growing up? Uh, growing up, a lot of Batman, Ninja Turtles, Power Pack. Yeah, my three main titles. Um, I liked uh, the stories. They were like you know nice and stark, but at the same time they were uh, they sent a message every time. So. How'd you feel getting put on Detective Comics with Paul and Derek? I love and it. Yeah, Derek Paul was just one of my favorite of a writer, so it was like you know you get to work with one of your favorites. Was uh, were his scripts really easy to draw, or did he? Oh uh, yeah, you a no. Bit freedom? Working with him was as smooth as possible, and Paul is just a really nice guy. You know. Did your uh, working uh, relationship change with Streets of Gotham with uh, Dick Grayson now taking over the role? Uh, no, no. I mean, you know, we pretty much just—that's what happens in comics. You go along with it, and everyone follows the continuity. And yeah. Did you try uh, to draw any of the characters differently? Maybe Batman. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, of course, Dick is a different Batman. You know, he's a, he's a little more svelte, and he's not as. Uh, He's more of an acrobat, so yeah, you keep that in mind when you're on him, yeah. I uh, things developed from there, um, you know, post Streets of Gotham into this new book uh, that you guys did for the last couple of years. Which Batman book? Batman Beyond. Uh, well, we finished Batman Beyond like a year, I finished like a year and a half ago. Um, it was great, you know, working with Derek. Derek and I, you know, we always have ideas back and forth, and we wanted to work in our own series for a while, so it was a lot of fun. What made you guys want to turn it into a gigantic series universe? You know, we've always wanted to do it. It was just a matter of them letting us do it. Was there initial uh, skepticism at any point from anybody on that? Or? Uh, you know, before you, you pitch it, there always is, you know? Yeah. Have you noticed uh, any reaction from other people like kids? I mean, it's a really Yeah, we get we get feedback from kids, uh, adults and everything. It's great. It's uh, all ages, truly all ages. Is that the thing you're working on, just, or do you have any other projects coming That's up? consuming me entirely right now. Yeah. What's a what's an autographed uh, complete autographed version of uh, Batman number one, New Fifty Two, DC? These days, are you going to be in the TV commercial TV with us here? Look at that! Welcome to my world. That was a photo bomb. Well, what's the Batman signed by who? Signed by Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, DC New Fifty Two. Oh my God, that's terrible! They ruined it. They wrote all over that rare comic. Creative Continuity, Cartoons, Con Rewind, Mr. Lobo Does, and more on this channel. Creative Continuity, we bring the convention to you.